What is happening? Chris Martinez. I'm the host of Operation Agency Freedom. And every once in a while, I have an amazing idea for an episode. And this is one of those episodes. Actually, it's going to be a two-part episode. So a long time ago, a friend of mine uh, that I knew from BNI, the networking group, he and I were chatting and we were talking about Cutco. And he told me, if you're not familiar with Cutco, they make knives. And I, I'm sure they're still around, but they were really, really popular like 15 years ago. And uh, so he was told, telling me that he worked at Cutco and all the money that he made. And I was like, man, that would be amazing to see the script and the training program that they had you go through to be able to sell Cutco. Because basically Cutco would recruit knucklehead college kids and then have them go out and sell knives. And these kids would crush it selling knives. And so he says to me, I think I still have the script for Cutco. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. Can you please look and see if you can give me a copy of it? So lo and behold, he goes searching through his box of old Cutco stuff and he gives me the script and the training that he went through for Cutco. So when you think of uh, systems and processes, most of the time you think of operations. Well, guess what? There's systems and processes in sales. And this is one of the most important processes that you need to build, uh, build out for yourself because in your agency, if you're not closing deals the same way every single time, you're going to have a very uh, difficult time hitting your close rate, right? Every single time. So um, on today's episode, I'm going to walk you through half of the book for the Cutco script. And I would highly recommend that you watch the video because I'm going to be sharing my screen and we're going to be going through this live on this call. Um, hopefully this is not a violation of some sort of like trade secret law or privacy or whatever, but screw it. I'm crazy like that. I'm sharing that with you guys today. So on today's episode, I'm going to go through half of the Cutco book. Uh, and then we'll pause because it's pretty big. Um, and then we'll do a second episode. We'll go through the second half of it. So very excited. If you want to see how a world-class sales process works that anybody can do, because literally knucklehead college kids would do it, then you are in store for a massive treat. So with that being said, Let's go over to the episode and let's look at the Cutco book. All right. I am so excited because uh, I've been sitting on this thing. This is kind of like my fault. I've been sitting on this script for close to 12 years, I would say, and um, never even thought to bring it out and share it with you guys. Now, I have shared it with some of my clients and things in the past, but I think it's about time we release this to the world. Um, I am not sure if Cutco is still in business. So if they're not in business, then this is like awesome. If they are in business and uh, hopefully they don't come after me, um, but whatever, you know, good luck trying to catch me. I can run pretty fast and I know jujitsu. Um, so if you're not familiar with Cutco, it is a, uh, a company, actually the, the company itself is called Vector Marketing, I believe. Cutco was a product, uh, knives. They would sell you a set of knives and it was considered like the best knives ever. And uh, the way that they sold was they would have somebody come out to your house and basically do a demonstration. So they would recruit college kids and say, hey, do you want to make you know a bunch of money selling these knives? Um, and we're going to show you how to do it. And we've got the script that works and so on and so forth. So a friend of mine that I knew through BNI, he we were talking about Cutco, and he's like, I used to work for them, and I made so much money in college. Like I stopped going to class because I was making so much money selling knives. All I wanted to do was sell knives, and um, so I was like, man, like they. I heard about the script, and it was like this book that you would flip through, and it was just like amazing. It's like yes, and he's like, I think I still have that. I'm like, dude, you have to give me it. So it gives me a copy and I scanned it. I remember going to like Kinko's or somewhere and I scanned every single page of that book, put it into a PDF and I've been sitting on this and I just had the idea because, you know, this whole month we're talking about processes. It was like, this would be a great time to talk about the Cutco sales process because a lot of the times when we think about processes, we think 
mainly on like the operations side, right? We got to build out our websites and our landing pages and our ads and our SEO. Well, that's not the only place that you have SOPs. It might be the place where you have the most SOPs, but you need to have SOPs in your sales as well. If you build out a sales team, you're going to want to make sure that they're doing things the same way every single time. Like you have a proven process that ensures results. And so basically you want to make sure that this process is rolled out to everybody on the team and that they're following it and that you're holding them accountable to it. Um, kind of a side note, uh, there's a service called Gong. It's called gong.io, I believe. And Gong's been around for a long time, but it is a uh, AI technology that basically records your calls and then it'll analyze those calls and it'll tell you and your manager uh, how you're doing in relation to what you're like when you're closing a lot of deals, these are the things that you say. This is the pace that you're saying it. These are the words that you emphasize. These are the questions that you ask. And so it'll say like, when you're doing all of these things, you're closing at 50%. And if you start to do these calls and you're usually it's inadvertently omitting things from the script or, you know, not having the enthusiasm that you normally do, then the technology will tell you like, hey, like you're making all these mistakes. This is why you're not closing. And so what Cutco figured out way before AI and even the internet is that we have a proven script. If you follow the script, you will sell a shitload of, of knives. If you don't follow the script, you're not going to sell any knives and we're going we're gonna, to um, fire you, right? And I believe that these kids were on straight commission. And what was funny is that my buddy uh, who gave me this, whose name will remain anonymous, um, he said, you know, like I started to get really confident and I was like, I don't need the script anymore. And he started to like ad lib or like go off script. And he's like, when I did that, I did not sell any knives. He's like, it was so stupid simple. You literally just follow the script and you do everything that they tell you to do in the script and you sell knives. And it's not like they had this amazing training program. They didn't have to hire Grant Cardone to like train their people. Like you literally just follow this book. So that's what we're going to go through today is I'm going to walk through the Cutco script and the training program that they gave. Cause this is, I think this is technically the training book, but it includes all of the script. So we're going to go through this today. I really hope that you're watching the video because uh, on my screen, I'm showing word by word what is included in this training book and script. So let's start, uh, let's get into it, okay? So um, first part, on page one, we have the introduction. And this is kind of nonsense. I mean, like they do it because it's supposed to be a corporate training, but you know, welcome to the Vector Sales Training Program. This seminar has been developed through years of experience in training men and women in the challenging and rewarding field of professional marketing, cut for, uh, of professionally marketing Cutco products. Without question, it is attitude, not aptitude, that determines one's level that determines one's level of success with vector. Therefore, you will be expected to maintain a positive professional attitude at all times during your training. As in every learning experience, the business you derive from this seminar will be directly proportionate to the effort you put into it. Your grasp of the fundamental ideas covered will greatly affect your income, not only during your first week, but for as long as you are with the company. The keys to excellence are confidence and enthusiasm. A confident person is one who is prepared. Hard work during this seminar will prepare you for success and your confidence will grow as the training progresses. An enthusiastic person not only believes 100% in the product, but also knows that everyone should own it. Enthusiasm comes from really enjoying your work, not just because of the financial rewards, but because of the opportunity for self-development and the pleasure of working with people. When this seminar is completed, you will know you are ready. Welcome to the Vector team. This is like straight up some like uh, uh, Jordan Belfort stuff, you know, Wolf of Wall Street stuff. But um, it works, right? Like my buddy told me, he's like, told, he was selling a ton of knives. So on the sheet, then they have some like quotes from John Wooden and William James and Ralph Waldo Emerson, 
and Mark Twain. And now this is really cool is they have their corporate vision. Um, so they have their vision and then they have their core values here, basically. So the vision is to become the largest, most respected and widely recognized cutlery company in the world. In this pursuit, we will adhere to these core values, honesty, integrity, and ethics. Uh, I'm not going to read all of these because there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight of them. So we're going to see, you can watch the video and go through them yourself. But this is pretty revolutionary because, you know, like now everybody talks about the vision and the mission and the core values. Back then, probably not as big of a thing. So they were way ahead of their time. So this is page one. Now, they do mention seminar in here. Um, I'm going to assume that their training program was over the course of like a weekend. So back then, you probably would show up, you know, this back in my telemarketing days, this is what would happen. Um, they would recruit, recruit you, you would show up on like a weekend, and it would just be like immersive eight hour days of training and role playing, right? So I'm just going to assume that that was what vector marketing was doing back in the day. So let's go over to page two. So the this is now where we're starting to get into the actual script, okay? So they say the first thing is warm up. You want to build rapport. So you want to introduce yourself and take time to talk with a customer. And they give you an example. Like I said on the phone, you don't have to buy anything. But if you do see something that you like, you can get it today. Now, what I teach for my marketing agencies is that I ask them, it's kind of like a variation of this question. I say, hypothetically speaking, and I'm not going to pitch you anything today, but if you saw that we had the exact marketing solution that you were looking for, say right price, everything, would you be willing to, to get started today, right? And we get them to have a verbal commitment. It's like a micro commitment, basically. Then it says, um, turn in the vector sheet it's, or the vector training. It says, turn to pages two and three in your blue book. So the blue book apparently was like this book that would fold into like a little tripod. And so on one side, you would have your script. And then on the side that was facing the customer, there would be like a picture or something like that. And so you would literally just read what was on your side of the sheet and then you would flip the page and it would flip to another picture. So basically the customer never saw the script, but it was like stupid simple, okay? So it says turn to pages two and three in your book. So you flip the page two and three. Then it says, thanks for seeing me today. In appreciation, the company has a monthly drawing for $1,000 that I get to enter you in. Now that I've told you about a contest you are in, let me show you a contest I'm excited about. Then you're supposed to talk to them about some college scholarship program that you're involved in now. Like they say the Fast Start, All-American Scholarship, Mallet Cup Trophy Race. I'm assuming that Cutco offers this to the top performing salespeople. But what it does do is it, it creates this connection, right? So like I gave you something. Now you have the chance to win a thousand bucks. And this is something that I'm working towards in my private life. So now we're kind of sitting on the same side of the table. So now they have the transition. So what I am here to show you is Cutco. But before I show you the product, let me tell you about the company. So we're starting to build a little bit of rapport. We have been in business since 1949. We sell over $250 million worth of Cutco annually with over 12 million customers, which makes us the top selling brand in the U.S. <coughs> Excuse me. All Cutco knives are made in the United States in our factory located in Olean, New York. To start off, i like to show you a product that demonstrates the quality of Cutco. So this is now they're going to start demoing the uh, the equipment. So pretty cool intro, right? So this this demo is called uh, Super Shears Penny Demo. So what they're what they're going to do here is they're actually going to cut a penny in half. Okay, so these are high carbon surgical stainless steel blades for strength and thermal resin handle for comfort for both le right and left handed people. They're dishwasher safe. They won't rust or melt. Shears come apart easy for easy cleaning. So imagine like you're standing there with somebody and like the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to get a penny and you're going to take these cut these scissors and you're going to cut the penny in half. Now you have like this wow factor and they're like, oh my God, this is amazing. Then you say, okay, so let me show you where we got the idea for Cutco. It says turn to pages four and five in your book and your blue book. Do these look familiar? 
They are the world's most expensive set of knives, made with the philosophy of planned obsolescence. They have to be replaced over and over. The average knife is engineered to break or go, go dull within one to two years, causing a high replacement cost. The wood handles, they are attractive when new, but they, de they tend to crack, break, and splinter. And they're not made to be put in a dishwasher. They are also unsanitary because they absorb grease, bacteria, and oil. On the other hand, there are plastic handles. Now, these tend to chip, crack, and melt. And they're usually glued together, and they can fall apart in the dishwasher. And they're slippery when wet. Then they have this thing called partial tang. Uh, I don't know what that means. Um, now, most rivets are made of brass, which will expand, contract, and loosen, creating gaps for food particles to fall into. And that's very unsanitary. Then the blades. Okay, so we have the carbon steel, the will knife, will stay sharper longer. Well, but they will also rust and corrode, which is very unsanitary. Unsanitary. Then we have stainless steel. These won't rust, pit, or corrode, but they also won't stay sharp, and it is difficult to sharpen them. We have serrated edges that rip and tear and cannot be resharp resharpened. Here's a transition. So I love in this book, they always say transition. The biggest problem with a set like this is that the knives are never sharp. Can you guess what the solution is to these problems? And you ask the person, and they're like, I don't know. Then it says, turn to pages six and seven in your blue book. These are the five features that make Cutco the world's finest set of cutlery. What do you notice that is different about the handle? So then they have in parentheses here, it says, take out the petite carver and you hand it to the customer. I love this because you're giving them something to hold. Now they're, you know, they're already heard the story and they're like nodding their head. And they're like, oh yeah, this, this makes a lot of sense. Now I get to hold one of your fancy knives after you already like cut the penny in half, like I'm in. These were designed by Dr. Thomas Lamb, Lam, uh, who studied over 700 pairs of hands. So we're getting credibility, Dr. Thomas Lamb. He could be a completely made up person, by the way. Um, and who the hell studies 700 pairs of hands? It's pretty creepy. It's like a murder show plot. Anyways, um, these are unique. There is a unique feature not found on any other knife. Its universal handle fits, fits any size hand, right, left, big, or small. Thumb and forefinger lock into place for better control and safety. They are more comfortable. Their more comfortable design reduces hand fatigue and slipping. I didn't even know that this was a thing. Okay, hand fatigue and slipping. Now we're going to talk about the thermo resin handle. Okay, that was the universal wedge lock handle. The thermo resin handle. This is not a cheap wood or plastic. It resists melting, chipping, cracking, and breaking. It won't fade, stain, or absorb moisture or bacteria. It is non-porous and sanita sanitary. And it's dishwasher safe. Now we're going to talk about the handle construction. Full tang construction using three nickel silver rivets. Nickel and silver. It sounds expensive to me. The tang extends full length of handle for extra strength and balance. Triple rivets are flush with the handle, eliminating gaps and spaces, which is more sanitary. Next, we're going to talk about the high carbon surgical steel. Okay, Similar to the type of steel doctors use in surgical instruments, like stainless, it resists rusting, pitting, or corroding, and is easy to clean, which makes it very sanitary. Sanitary. Like carbon steel, it resists doling and holds a sharp edge. It's the highest quality steel available for kitchen cutlery. It's funny. This is kind of sexist. It says Mrs. Blank. So apparently they plan on pitching to the uh, woman of the house. Um, so Mrs. Smith, what I need you to do is get your favorite serrated edge and straight edge knives and a steak knife so we can compare how the different types of edges work. This is so good. Like, first of all, like if, if you go back to the third slide and he's talking about the reasons why all the other knives suck, 
what they're doing here is a, a process that we call developing the need. So a lot of the times people don't know that they are having a problem. You probably see this in your line of work all the time where the the client says, you know, like my website's fine or like my traffic is fine or whatever, my branding, my copy, whatever, it's fine. So you have to kind of develop the need by asking questions or in this case, they're telling a story about all the problems with all the knives. And then that person's like, like oh shit, I didn't even know that I had all these problems, okay? Um, so Mrs. Smith, what I need you to do is get a, a, get your favorites rated edge and straight edge knives and a stick knife so we can compare how the different types of edges work. So it says why we cut rope. So what this guy does now is he pulls out a piece of rope, the salesman, and he's going to cut this rope in half. And it says, hold the rope with both hands, place the back end of the blade on the rope, pull with one long stroke, and then go back and forth. Use the same motion with a knife. So why do we cut with the rope? It's tough and fibrous like vegetables and cooked meats. It will not also hurt the knife edge. So then it says perform the rope cutting demonstration. Customer's straight edge and serrated edge, then DD edge of the petite carver. So essentially what they're doing, I believe, is that they're taking the rope and they're trying to cut it with the person's knives that they have now. So it's like, oh my God, you're pitting my knives against your amazing Dr. Thomas lamb knives. Never going to fucking win this contest. Um, and then, they, of course, they take their petite carver, the petite carver, not the big crazy carver. It's the petite carver. And you're going to see how easily they chop through this rope, right? You're like, oh, my God, if this is what they can do with the petite carver, imagine what the other one's going to do. So uh, we're continuing now. So the reason this edge works so well is because it's not serrated. This edge has three straight edges that are protected by the points. It cuts forward and backwards and straight or uh, and straight down. And then it says point to the picture. It doesn't rip and tear like a serrated edge. It cuts like a straight edge. Points protect recessed edges from dulling on cutting boards and other hard surfaces. If used properly, the DG edge will remain sharp for up to seven to ten years. Seven to ten years. Now you say that and you're like, man, I just brought my knives, knives like two years ago and they already suck. Okay. Next, we're going to go into our forever guarantee. The best thing about Cutco isn't how long it stays sharp. It's how the company stands behind it with a forever guarantee. If anything ever goes wrong with your Cutco, just send it back to the factory and the company will fix or replace it for free. If at any time your Cutco needs sharpening, just send it back and it will be sharpened and polished for free. The only thing you pay for is the shipping. If you ever happen to destroy your Cutco through abuse, then you can send it back to the company and it will be replaced for half the current retail value. Do you feel that you can make a better decision on the spot or by trying a product? That is why we have a money back guarantee. So you can try out the product if you're not satisfied for any reason at all. You can get a full refund. It says you have 15 days and the company stands behind our products 100%. Uh, it's in there's a transition. I'm going to like tell you one quick thing. Um, apparently, these uh, salespeople would actually go out and sharpen the knives for the people that they sold them to. So why, why do you think that they would do that? That the salespeople would purposely go out and resharpen knives for people? It's because it gives them another opportunity to sell them more knives. Right. The more like you have this happy customer, you're giving them amazing service. They just want their knives sharpened up. They love them. They're not going to throw them away like they did the other 50 pairs of knives that they that they bought in the past. So now when you go back out, you can sell them more stuff. Right. This is another reason why in our agencies we have uh, calls with the account managers. Right. Because it gives us an opportunity to upsell them into more stuff if they're happy. All right, so on this page, there is a transition. So anytime you want to do a good job, you need to have the right tools. Whether you're playing golf, working on your car, or preparing a meal, a quality set of tools will save you time, money, and energy. And then it says, turn to page eight and nine in your blue book. Realizing the importance of having the right tools, we had a group of home economists design your basic Cutco set to have the minimum number of tools to do 100% of the jobs in your kitchen as efficiently as possible. This set is called our homemaker set, and it starts with your paring knife, I'm guessing. 
Um, because that's the first knife we're going to talk about the pairing knife. So what do you know? Oh, I I know what they're going to do here. So they they have the set with them. The salesperson has the set with them, and so they're going to hand the set to the person, and they get to feel it, right? So they already got to probably touch the the scissors. They got to touch the petite, whatever the hell it was that cuts rope and everything else. Now, now we're going to start to get into the actual set that I am going to consider buying. So you get the pairing knife. Okay. So they're going to, this is really, really helpful. And this is one of the challenges that we have as agencies is that what we sell is intangible. And one of the challenges that you have to overcome is taking that intangible and making it a tangible. Okay. So the pairing knife. So what do you notice that's different about this pairing knife? I don't know. It looks different. It's prettier. I don't know. And then the salesperson comes back. So most pairing knives have a short stubby handle that digs into your palm. Full size handle allows for greater, greater comfort control and makes it safer. Pitting. Or so here it says uses pitting peaches and nectarines, removing eyes from potatoes, removing roots and stems from fruits and vegetables, slicing bananas for cereal, removing the tops from fresh strawberries and coring apples, right? These are all the things that you can use this amazing pairing knife for. Then they have the trimmer. This is your everyday tool in the kitchen. You can see that mine has the pearl handle. All our knives come with either the classic or pearl handles. So it says show the pairing knife or show the trimmer, right? So you're comparing the two. Which color do you like better? This is actually a micro commitment. I love this question. Which color do you like better? They're saying, oh, well, I like the pearl or I like the uh, classic, right? Cool. Oh, I love that. Such a great idea. That's my favorite too. So here are the benefits. Have you ever tried to cut a tomato with a dull knife? Everybody has done this. Yes, it sucks. The tomato goes slipping everywhere. I, maybe I cut myself. I cut my kid's head off. I don't know. With the trimmer, you'll get paper thin slices. So here's some other uses. You can sectioning grapefruits, slicing cucumbers and tomatoes, trimming fat from meats, skinning chicken and removing corn from the cup. Now we're going to the next one, the spatula spreader. Sounds like a uh, wrestler name. Uh, this is like a regular slat spatula, very flexible, except it has the DD edge. It is a sandwich making machine. So for all those housewives that are making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches in the 90s, this is your magic tool. Makes it easier to get into jars of mayo or, or peanut butter and jelly. You can cut sandwiches. And have only one tool to clean. It's used for cutting and serving lasagna, casserole, pizza, brownies, and pies, icing, cutting, and serving cakes. Now we move on to the petite carver. I think this is the one that we use. Yeah. This is the one that you use. Oh, my gosh. They actually have the customer cut the rope. This is the one that you used to cut the rope. It's the in-between knife for jobs too big for the trimmer and too small for the carver. It separates English muffins and bagels evenly, large enough but not too large for small roasts and chickens. You can use it for poultry, steak, and small roasts, large vegetables and fruits such as eggplant, squash, and cantaloupe, and also for carving pumpkins for Halloween. Next up, we have our tuning fork. Oh my God, there's more? Have you ever had a hard time turning food in a frying pan? Oh, absolutely, it's the worst thing in the world. Now, here's the benefits. The three extremely sharp, sharp pointed tines that have been shaped to make it easier to use. It's used for turning bacon, sausage, ham, chicken, French toast, and stir-fry vegetables, removing olives, pickles, and cherries from the jar. We're still going, by the way. There's more. There's more knives. This is all in the first set. We've got a lot of sets to go through. Yeah, in this episode, I've got like four more sheets to go through, so... But I'm sure you're having fun because I'm having fun. So the next one is the butcher knife. Have you ever tried to cut something that was so hard you thought your knife would break? This is the protector and the money saver of the, soul, of the, of the set. It is a heavy-duty knife that protects all the other tools in the set. You save money when you buy chicken whole instead of pre-cut. Ah, now, so I'm saving money by buying these knives. It's used for separating frozen hot dogs. Who the hell does that? It's used for separating frozen hot dogs, ground beef, or hamburger patties, disjointing chicken, turkey, and other poultry, separating ribs, cutting through tough squash. 
This is the preferred knife of all serial killers. That's the butcher knife. So now we're on to the French chef and the petite chef. This is the food processor and time saver of the set. It has a high knuckle clearance. It's the safest knife in the set. So the other one saved me money. This one's going to keep me safe. It's more time efficient than using a small knife to cut piece by piece. Dicing, mincing. It's used for dicing, mincing, chopping fruits, nuts, and vegetables like onions, carrots, celery, or walnuts. The five S's. <laughs> Salad, soup, stew, stir fry, and stuffing. That's what this one is for. The French chef or the petite chef. All right, so now I got even more knives to show you. We're going to pull out the slicer. Have you ever smashed fresh bread while trying to cut it? Oh, my God, it's so frustrating. The slicer guides through piping hot homemade bread and French bread without smashing or tearing it. The benefits are it's the longest DD edge in the set. It gives you straight, even slices, um, and it's used for slicing breads and cakes, even angel food or ice cream. Boneless meats and cheeses, shredding lettuce and cabbage for salads, and coleslaw. Next, we're into the carver. This knife brings the tradition of carving back to the dinner table instead of using an electric knife that rips and shreds the turkey. Oh, I love this. So the benefits are no more shredded turkey. With the carver, you get large, even slices. You're going to be the envy of the whole neighborhood. Cheeses are large roasts, turkeys, and barbecue. I'm starting to get hungry thinking about all this food, by the way. Next, we have the carving fork. The, the two long tines anchor meat and keep it from slipping. It's attractive for special occasions, yet practical and durable for everyday use. With the carver, it is the master carving set. With the tune, turning fork, it works well for lifting food out of a pan or oven. Its uses are turning large roasts and turkeys, lifting meats from roasting pan, holding meats while carving and serving at the dinner table. Now we've got our table knives. Knives. These are called table knives, not steak knives, because they are used for every meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So like, I, I actually have a set of steak knives. We don't need steak that much in the house, and they just sit there, and like, I can't really use them for anything else. So this is actually a really, really good point. So I'm not just buying a set of steak knives. I'm buying a set of everyday knives. <laughs> They are the most used knives in your set. They, the benefits are they have a rounded tip and wide blade, just like regular butter knife, just like a regular butter knife, and a sharp edge like a steak knife. DD edge means no more earthquake effect at the table. Earthquake effect at the table. That's hilarious. It's great for butter on toast, tomatoes and salads, and vegetables and meats at dinner. All right, now we're into the leather demo. That would mean something on a completely different show. Something different on a completely different show. Okay, so we're going to cut leather using the customer steak knife and then the Cutco table knife. So now we're going to do another comparison. So can you see how over time you would use each tool? So this is like asking the person like, oh, like, can you see yourself using these tools? Anytime you have sharp cutlery, cutlery it needs to be stored safely. So we have, turn to pages 10 and 11 in your book. For storage in a drawer or on the wall, uh, we have the storage trays, also great for boats and campers. We have the wood blocks. These are made of solid oak. Rubber pegs protect block from spills and preventing sliding. Now, Mrs. Smith, which do you prefer, the trays or the wood block? Again, getting that person a little micro commitment of which one they like best. Then you would agree, like, hey, yeah, those are my favorite too. Transition. To complement your homemaker set, we have, and then it goes into a different one. So they have, they feature a design called the, sh the Chef's Curve. It fits over the side of the pan and makes it easier to serve. Thermal resin handles won't melt, burn, or get hot in your hand. Lip, lip prevents tools from falling into the pan. These replace all your mismatched tools. They have a basting spoon. They have a slotted spoon, a slotted turner, mixed stir mix stir ladle and a rack and each one of these they explain what it's good for so let's go to the summary cut coat is a good investment because you'll always have a sharp knife you'll always have the right tool for the task at hand it is made with the highest quality materials guaranteeing superior performance comes with our forever guarantee which promises you'll never have to buy another knife 
So this is going to be the last one that we're going to cover, and then uh, we'll come back. So this is wrapping up and closing the sale. So price comparison. Mr. or Mrs. Smith, most people haven't had the opportunity to price fine cutlery. It's like anything else. There's a wide variety of quality and prices available. I'm sure you'd agree that we cannot compare Cutco to a cheap set of, uh, of knives sold at a local bargain store. Then it says present Hankel's price comparison. So that's another sheet. I have a price comparison for a cutlery set that is similar to Cutco. It's called Hankel's, and it's found in most department stores and specialty shops. Have you heard of it before? Person going, yeah, I've seen Hankel's. They're always way too expensive. Hankel's is a very high quality set of cutlery made in Germany. It has almost everything that you look for in a set of cutlery. Um, now let's go through the Hankel's features. They have full tang and polypropylene handles, high carbon stainless steel blades, very sharp. It's one of the top selling brands in the stores. As you can see, the price for Hankel's for the set is $1,562. Um, it's really important, by the way, that when you're talking about something that's way more expensive, you say the entire price, 1562 now, when you're just giving your price to make it seem cheaper or like very afford affordable, you would say it's just fifteen sixty two, right? You don't say one thousand five hundred and sixty two. One thousand five hundred and sixty two sounds very scary. It's just fifteen sixty two. Easy. Oh my God, what a deal! Okay, so you can find it on sale for less. There are, however, some differences between Hankel's and Cutco. And then you go through the differences. Hankel's does not have Cutco's universal wedge lock handle. Uh, the edge, their straight edges must be cons constantly sharpened, unlike the double D edge. The guarantee, uh, the guarantee covers defects only while Cutco has the forever guarantee. Their guarantee covers defects only while Cutco has their guarantee. Sorry. <laughs> their guarantee covers defects only while Cutco has the forever guarantee. Most people who own Cutco will tell you that it's 10 times better than any knives they have ever used. I know you haven't had the chance to use it that much yet, but considering the guarantee and unique features, most people would agree that Cutco is at least twice as good as Hankel's. It's twice as good as Hankel's, so in your mind, you're saying it should be twice as expensive. It should be like $3,000, right? Well, when something is – and this is – now let's go back to the, the, the script – well, when something is twice as good, offers twice the quality, and twice the value, what does it normally ask for in price? What a great question. What does it normally ask for in price? All right. We're going to take a break. I've been talking for a long time here, so i got to go get a glass of water. Um, I'm going to continue, so you hang on till next week, guys. We will get through the rest of the book, and I'll go through all the Cutco, uh, the closing process, because this is gold. Um, and, uh, you'll get to see how these masters made millions and millions, I should say billions and billions of dollars. So we'll see you on the next episode. Hey, thank you for listening. And if you enjoyed this episode, it would mean so much to me if you would subscribe to the podcast and also share it with friends, family, and basically anyone, you know, who will find the same value in this episode as you do. So to get the latest from me then let's connect on social media on the Facebooks at facebook.com forward slash dude agency or Instagram at dudeagency.io. Then you can also find us on LinkedIn, YouTube, and even TikTok. Yes, I'm that cool. We are on TikTok. Finally, go to our website at dudeagency.io where you can see all of our other episodes of Operation Agency Freedom, Register for live trainings on how to run a highly profitable agency, and you can see exactly how we help marketing agencies fix their operations and scale to eight figures and beyond. Thanks again for listening, and I will see you next time.